We start with an exercise from the previous video to establish the continuity. It's important to have watched video 1 for these progressions to make sense. Having previously progressed through balance exercises, our new goal of loading into plantar flexion can begin with inline tiptoe walking. The ability to work into plantar flexion can be transferred into the goal of running patterns as we introduce the exercise that I've always known as the Tower of Power. Loading into plantar flexion is progressed with A walks. Having addressed force acceptance, there is now a safe progression in goal 4 to produce force. The ability to jump should always follow the ability to land. The previously addressed A walk is now progressed to an overhead A walk increasing the lever length of the upper body which in turn then increases the demand in plantar flexion on the foot. Running patterns are continued with the introduction of the most basic form of the exercise, the running man. Again drawing on the previous progressions from video 1 we introduce an unstable star balance to start working on movement variability. Plantar flexion progressions increase in demand with a new exercise on a sprung floor. The recoil provided by the floor is the difference between this being in goal 1 versus goal 4 which is rate of force development. Double leg progresses into a single leg with this exercise. A new exercise is now added to goal 4. Superman dives work on rate of force development. They're a little bit different so they add some variability and they inject a little bit of fun. Moving off of the sprung floor and onto a hard surface, bunny hops are progressed with an external focus of a hurdle. Again, these don't fall into goal 4, as speed is not a necessary variable. Knowing that rate of force development is being addressed elsewhere in the program, we can afford to concentrate more on the landing. These are then progressed to single leg. We continue to add to movement variability with a diagonal quick step. Combining plantar flexion, sagittal and coronal loading with a transverse resistance as the lower limb resists against rotation. A walks can be transferred and challenged in goal 3 with the addition of a water pipe overhead. The movement of the water within the pipe challenges stability and range in the trunk and in the lower limb. Running patterns are challenged with the addition of perturbation, forcing the athlete to work on control and stability throughout range. Rate of force development is initially progressed in the sagittal plane to include a reactive component, aiming for minimal contact time to work plyometrically. The running pattern from goal 2, in combination with the overhead water pipe, is added to the tower of power. The movement of the pipe from lateral to overhead challenges the exercise through multiple planes, and it requires the ability to decelerate the mass. Different exercises from within the same goal are combined here. The reactive step down is combined with the superman dive to add propulsion to the rate of force development. Specific to this midfoot injury, the control of the midfoot rotation in plantar flexion is particularly important. The circuit described here is heavily inspired by the great work by Suzanne Scott and I've attached a separate video to explain this in a little bit more detail. This can be found in the blog. Continuing the work of rate of force development, the reactive step down is now moved into a lateral plane. The previous work done on hopping and landing in goal 1 can be progressed with increased variability of movement, as sport is uncontrolled and external stimuli can be unpredictable. Adding a degree of chaos to the drill, it helps the transition to more unpredictability but within a controlled environment. This can be progressed further by adding moving objects or other athletes, different commands, etc. The pinball and single leg pinball exercises are good for creating active stiffness in the foot and in the ankle, encouraging full dorsiflexion and a quick reactive plantar flexion movement. As the player edges closer to football specific drills and training, the last stages of the running patterning is progressed. As much for the foot but also to aid running performance, hurdle knee drives are encouraged to dissociate the contralateral limb. Resisted knee drives encourage a forward lean and a triple extension. The resistance can be progressed once more to overload the movement pattern and this can be done using a weighted sled. 
It's at this stage that the athlete begins to transition into more football-specific drills and their return to training.